Good evening. It's good to be with you this afternoon from the Liberty Church of Christ. We would encourage you to get your Bibles and study along with us as we take a look at another lesson. We are, as individuals, are taught to study God's Word and show ourselves to prove that we might be able to discern right from wrong. As we start this lesson today, we're going to have a lesson that maybe will refresh our minds a little bit, and it's all about the plan of salvation, and we're going to discuss each step a little bit and maybe have some thoughts that I have uh, thought about in my life, and maybe it will help you some. In Hebrews 5.12 it says, For when the time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principle of God's Word, and have become such as need the milk instead of strong meat. In other words, we are, have been a member for a while, we've been in God's church, we haven't studied, we haven't decided that this is what we need to do. So as we look at it and we think about those things that the Bible instructs us to do, we as individuals need to see what's going on. I, I don't know, a lot of us sometimes or, or it's so easy for a person to ignore God's Word. I know as we look around and and look at society today, God has blessed everyone, and I mean everyone, to such an extent until we don't need God no more. We have done this, God didn't do it. I believe that my thoughts are scriptural this day, and if not, I would certainly be honored if you would call me and correct me. <clears throat> Excuse me, the first uh, step of our plan of salvation is to hear God's word. Romans 10, 17 tells us that faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And some thoughts that we need to maybe put into hearing. You know, we've got the Bible. This is a New Testament, King James Version. You can, you can pick up one. A Gideon will give you a New Testament. We at Liberty would give you a New Testament or a complete Bible if you would. Need, in need of one, we want the Word of God spread. And as we look at it and we think about people that has the written Word, not me standing here teaching you or telling you about how to become a Christian, but how you can by yourself become a Christian. We have some brethren in our congregation that is obey the gospel simply by study. Uh, if you remember the eunuch in the book of Acts, he was riding in a chariot, he was reading from the Old Testament, maybe uh, wanting to know what this meant and what that meant. Of course, God sent Philip and Philip went down and he told him, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you certainly can be baptized and he was baptized. Now, he knew of all the plan he believed to start with, and that's the next step in our plan of salvation. Hebrews 11, 6 is a, a verse that I like to talk about because it says, Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is the reward of them that diligently seek him. And then the next verse talks about faith that Noah had and the whole chapter of 11th chapter of Hebrews <clears throat> known as uh, the honor roll of the faith if we look at it it's those people that had faith they believe what God said and if you go back and look at their lives and we were to talk about them and the first one that's mentioned is Noah and we in our hearts know what Noah did Noah went a lot of years with people making fun of him building an ark so mankind could be uh, saved. And it was only he and his family that were saved. 
above uh, on the ark. <clears throat> so we've got to believe what the Word of God says, and we have got to know that God is God and believe that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <clears throat> now, the next portion is repent. In Luke 13, 3 it says that by your ignorance God at one time winked at, but now everybody should repent. Acts 2, 38, after the sermon on, <clears throat> that Peter gave on the day of Pentecost, People ask him what to do, and he said, repent and be baptized. And then we'll go to confession, which is Romans 10, 10. What are we going to confess? We, uh, we look at it and we think about those things that, that uh, a person says confess. Now, we know as individuals that we confess our sins one to another after we become Christians, we confess them as before we get to a point, but as we obey the gospel, we need to know why or why or who we're confessing. Turn your Bibles to Romans 10 and let's look at 9 and 10 and 11. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now a lot of people would say that's all you got to do is just confess him and you'll be saved. The Bible teaches that you have to be baptized. Maybe get a little bit before myself, but as we look at those verses where it talks about repent and be baptized, if we look at the Great Commission, Mark 16, 15, 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And of course, he that does not do those things will be damned. And we look at Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized. In numerous places we find repent and be baptized. After we make a confession, for with the heart, verse 10, for with the heart man believed unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. You believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then you uh, make that confession. For the scripture says, whosoever believed on him shall not be ashamed. And that's another point. We are, as individuals, sometimes a little bit ashamed of what we are, we don't want to tell people, look, I'm a member of the Lord's church. <coughs> Excuse me. As we go through our daily lives and we are around people by our lives, they should know. Sometimes we don't do those things and live our lives as we should. So <coughs> we get through confessing and then we must be baptized. I suppose this must be the hardest thing in life for people to realize in Christianity that baptism is a part of Christianity. It's part of being a Christian. I don't know why people will not humble themselves to be baptized. It's nothing more than just showing your respect to God that this is a step that you're supposed to make and if we can't be baptized, I don't know that we can get into heaven. We have people that attend liberty that do all the things that Christians do, but they will not be baptized. I would hate to be in their steps or in their shoes when they face judgment day. Baptism is really the final step other than faith. If we would just just take it at heart and do it, this is not something that's taught by the churches of Christ only. It is taught by God's Word. If you would just take time and, and look at the scriptures and do those things, as we just said, Mark 16, 15, 16 is was given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and it tells us to go into all the world and teach people and baptize them. 
Peter pointed it out in Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, and we find it in numerous places in the book of Acts. What are we? Are we a people that obey man rather than obeying God? Do we listen to what our preachers say or our speakers, the folks we call our pastors? Do we listen to them and not study, not take God's word and look at it and find out exactly what we're supposed to do. We pointed out in 2 Timothy 2.15 to study to show yourself approved unto God. Why not do that? Revelation 22.18 and 19 is two verses that I it bothers me a lot because they say so much. Don't add to God's word. Don't take away or your name be taken out of the book of life. Some things that we find and don't find in our scriptures, we do not find the sinner's prayer in the Bible recorded anywhere. We don't find baptizing babies in the Bible. But we do find false teachers. We do listen to false teachers. We listen to their doctrine, and their doctrine will not save us, only the scriptures will save us. We need to examine our lives and make changes in them to go in God's direction. Study and make sure that whatever you do in worship is in God's word. Just make sure that, well, one thing that the preacher is teaching you right, that I'm telling you the truth this morning, <clears throat> Baptism is a item that saves us according to 1 Peter 3.21. It is a burial according to Romans 6. And if you would like to be baptized, all you have to do is call us here at Liberty and, and we will be more than honored to help you in any way. How many people do you know that teach untruths? Well, you really can't know unless you know that it is an, is an untruth. It's up to individuals to find out exactly what's being taught. How many of us listen to the truth and obey it? I know it's hard to think about, but there's nobody gonna make you obey the gospel, there's nobody going to make you study, there's nobody going to make you <clears throat> do what you really need to do except yourself. God made us free moral agents and through being a free moral agent we're able to do those things that he wants us to. Be sure that as we live our lives we do what the Bible teaches not what men teach. It's hard for us sometimes to think about, well, I can do this, I can do that. God has blessed each one of us. The virus is brought here, the one that we're so detrimentally talking about and listening to people, telling you how you don't get it, how you can keep from it and whatnot. The only solution I find is through our Lord and Savior. The biggest thing I can do right now is ask you to obey God rather than men. Do what God says. Don't add to it, don't take away. It is with pleasure that I have presented these thoughts to you and I would ask you to consider them. If you have any questions or anything about them, just call uh, the church building and somebody will be glad to help you. We would invite you to come worship with us on Sunday mornings at 10. We'd ask you to listen to our program that's on YouTube and on Facebook. And I understand the streaming lively and we will, we're setting our auditorium up that we can instruct people and people can come. If you would, now as we close this out, bow with me. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful for this day and for the many blessings of it, for the opportunities that we've had to worship you. We're thankful. 
We do pray for those that are ill and those that are suffering, ones that we know about that really need our prayers and we, you know who they are, Lord. For those that have lost loved ones due to the virus, we pray that you would bless each one of them and relieve their suffering. Help us to be better tomorrow than we have been this day. Help us to study thy word and that we can enjoy a home in heaven with you that we will not lose our souls because of lack of study. We're so thankful for the congregation at Liberty and for each and every individual that meets here and for those things and the ones that participate in doing those things that are right. We're grateful. Defeat us following those things we attempt that is wrong. I know there's numerous ones that need to be prayed for at this time and we do ask you to bless each one of them that, that knows that you know that needs our prayers. Go with us now and protect us and help us to enjoy life and uh, home in heaven with you in the end. In Christ's name, amen.